It's game week, everybody. Week one of the 2022 NFL season is upon us. Thank you for joining us here on the Falcons Audible, presented by AT&T. I'm Derek Rackley. With my guys, as always, in the flesh, in studio this week, DJ Shockley oh. is back. He doesn't have his work commitments right now. so it's, we, not, it's not a hologram. Yeah, it's, he's actually yeah, here. It's <laughs> and, of so. course, Dave Archer. We've got some excitement because, look, not that all the rest of the season is not excited to talk about, but when you're actually getting ready for regular season oh, and you're going to see more than, like, four minutes of starters, That's right. you, you're looking forward to some things going on, not to mention the fact of the opponent that is coming into the house. So let's mm-hmm. dive right into it. It. Here's what we're going to cover today. Of course, our first reaction season opener here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We're going to talk about the Saints. The Saints come into the into the house this week, and we're going to kind of give you a little bit of background of what the New Orleans Saints look like right mm-hmm. now because there's been some changes with them, just like there has been with every team throughout the NFL. What's it going to take on the field to beat New Orleans? And then finally... I'm going to toss it up and see if the guys have any favorite season opening Mm. memories from their career. We're going to take a trip down memory lane. I don't know. My memory isn't all that great these days, but (laughs) hey, we'll still do it. All right. So, guys, let's get into it. First reactions. Dave, I want to start with you. There's a lot of things that you could be excited about. It's week one. It's the rivalry. It's a home game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. What's got you the most excited for this weekend? Well, I think it's all of that, really. But it's uh, the new guys you got on the field. There's a there's a breath of fresh air. There's some newness to this football team. Obviously, what the two quarterbacks or the quarterback and Marcus Mariota is going to bring to the table from ability to stretch the sideline to sideline, make some plays there. Drake London, you're expecting him to be on the field. We'll have to find out midweek where he is coming back from his injury when he's sustained against Detroit. So I think just the newness of it is the excitement level. I think a lot of teams get that way but then you throw in saints at home first game How, what's not to be excited about? dave i want to i want to bounce it right back to you because you also call the games on the radio for the falcons and this is going to be the first season opening game that you're going to call without a certain guy playing quarterback how is it going to be for you? I mean, not that it's nostalgic or anything like that, but you've if there was one constant that you would always prepare yeah. for, it was Matt Ryan was going to be taking the first snap. That's not going to be the case. So what is? have you wrapped your mind around that, your head around the new quarterback here? Because it's been the same guy for a long time. It yeah, like you're about to cry. Well, no, <laughs> it's a, I, I, a little tear. Look, okay, okay, okay. No, he set it up so well, too, right? It was like a storybook type deal. Um yeah, Matt Ryan was was a phenomenal player. I think he's a Hall of Fame player. I think that Shock and I would agree with that. 14 years here, the best quarterback that's ever put on the uniform. So, all that being said, some newness there. I actually exchanged texts with Ryan after their first preseason game. So, I kind of went through this then. I'd call, I've called every game of Ryan's career up to that preseason game. Yeah. All the preseason, 14 years of football, brilliance in football. I, I texted him and said, dude, this is weird, man, seeing you play. And I didn't play. He hit me back. He says, Arch, I miss you. He says, uh, love being down here, excited about the new opportunity, miss seeing all you guys. I yeah. uh, wish the Falcons nothing but, but success and all that kind of stuff. So all the things you'd expect Matt Ryan sure. to say. But I kind of wrapped my head around it during the preseason. Yeah. So I haven't really thought about it now because I feel like we've already kind of been there and done sure. that, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, such a gracious pro. And it, it's obviously going to be different for all Falcons fans seeing a different uh, a different guy back there taking the first snap. But that's just kind of how the business works. Sometimes you move on. DJ, I want to throw it over to you. Um, we're talking about week one, rivalry, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, or... It could be like the old multiple choice quizzes in, quizzes in school. D, Other. none of the above. Yeah. What, what, what's got you excited? Well, first off, the most interesting thing is the fact that me and Arch are both QBs, right? So yeah. we, we pretty much think alike, right? I'm going to pull this out, Arch. What does the first thing on my sheet say right here? What does that say? Newness. The exact same thing. <laughs> I mean, thinking about all the newness that this team and this offense is going to have. And it's funny, when he started talking, I looked at my notes and said, it's the exact same thing I was thinking. And then you brought up the offense and Matt Ryan. And mm-hmm. that's one of the things that really sticks out for me that I'm excited about is we're going to see a totally different style of offense yeah. than we have seen in 14 years. I mean, yeah. we haven't seen this style where we have a quarterback that can move, that can get on the edge, that can do a lot of different things. We saw it in the preseason. And I think that's something to be excited about because it's going to look different to the fans. It's going to it's going to score points differently. It's going to, you know, just 
the newness of it, I think, is going to be fun. I think a lot of people should be excited about the different pieces that you have, uh, the ways you can use a, a Cordell Patterson now, the way you can use Kyle Pitts, all that kind of stuff. I think it's going to be fun. Read to watch. what you got right there. <laughs> Fresh start. That's, I mean, that's that's a, you can't sum it, it up is. any better than what Shock's got written down there. Fresh yeah, start. I mean, there there is a lot of excitement because it's it's the one time of the year where you're you're zero and zero, you're yeah. zero and zero because as you guys know, like after a loss, like walking around the locker room and all that stuff like when you start off the season 0 and 1 it's just a different feel right yeah. it's just like yeah. uh right you start the season off with a victory and you're like okay let's go we're doing this and there's one more piece i want to add to it we all heard dean p talk this off season how excited should you be that he's talking to the media like this mm -hmm. so you know what it's like inside one of those meeting rooms and what he's expressing to them about we're not going to be who everybody thinks we're going to be. We're not going to be the old Falcons defense. And he talked about a culture shift and change. Yeah. And he let everybody know it's going to be different. Yeah. So if you're not excited about that, that your coach, your defensive coordinator who's been around 50 years, <laughs> is excited about this season, said he's excited about this bunch, I don't know what you can be excited about. Defense, I think he said something along the lines of, defense hadn't been too great around here mm -hmm. recently. That's going to change, mm -hmm. right? And if and if you're made of the right fabric, that's no what you're looking forward to. So yeah. there is. There is a lot of newness. I think you're you're going to be looking at difference in the backfield as far as running back goes. It's going to look differently this year. As you mentioned, quarterbacks are going to have more carries than we've ever seen Matt Ryan have. And then, of course, again, like you mentioned, if Drake London is able to be out, if his health is good enough for him to be out there, can he stretch the defense? Can he take the top off? Off and be that piece opposite of Kyle Pitts. And then, as you mentioned, see the next progression in Kyle Pitts' career is going to be really exciting. So let's take a quick little shift here because we've talked a lot about the Atlanta Falcons, a lot of the new players, a lot of the schemes that we're going to see on the field. Let's talk about the opponent, guys. DJ, I'm going to bring it right back to you. For the, Fal the fans that are watching that are more Falcons fans, so they're not diving into New Orleans Saints knowledge. Give them a little bit of a scouting report of what the New Orleans Saints look like right now. Uh, I think you got to start with the head man, Dennis Allen, who's been there, I say he's been there 12 years, I think it is, as a part of the staff some way, somehow. And now he's getting his first job as the as the first change as the head coach. It starts there with him. And then, obviously, the quarterback, Jameis Winston, a guy who everybody knows really well, was playing really well last season until he got hurt. And then you got some of the usual suspects on the offense side of the ball with uh, Marquez Calloway, you know, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, who's always been big for him uh, over the years and always been a key factor. And then you, you talk about bringing up a veteran in Jarvis Landry. You know is a guy who's been there, who's done it, who – who's going to go out and play above and beyond. And they bring in this rookie, Chris Olave, out of Ohio State. So you're talking about some explosive guys on the offensive side of the ball that this Falcons team have to get ready for. And I think that's why you watching the preseason, it was the emphasis on the secondary. Arch, I think you might have brought it up in our first time talking, you know, what's our depth, depth look like there? Because yeah. you go around this league, Everybody has quality receivers. Everybody has big-time receivers. The Saints will have the same. And I was looking up some, some numbers on Jameis Winston, and last year he had three interceptions uh, in 161 attempts in 2021. That tells you that he's trying to adapt his game. He's yeah. trying to change the way people looked at him back in 2019 when he had 30-plus interceptions. Mm -hmm. His time sitting down, you know, watching Drew Brees has helped him. Uh, in 2021 – he kept 67% of his passes to 10 yards or less. That tells you, yeah, he wants to throw the football down the field. That's what he's known for. But mentally, I think he's changed his game to be a little bit more efficient and accurate. So having some weapons around him, having some guys around him, I think he's kind of understood that part of the ball game for us. And uh, I'll let Arch talk more about the defense, and I'm sure he had more to add on the offense. But uh, the usual suspects on that side of the ball, I think it's going to be interesting to watch and how the Falcons really go about trying to – Trying to guard those guys. Yeah, interesting that you talk about the shift in Jameis Winston because you're right, taking those shots down the field are explosive plays, but that's also balls that are getting picked off in the NFL. The mm -hmm. corners are just too good at this level. So I think this organization, Arch, is obviously adjusting because they were in such a good position with Drew Brees at quarterback and Sean Payton as the head coach. I mean, this, this organization was locked up, tied up, and they had the right player that was leading everything from the quarterback position. So that's changing now. What do you feel like the Saints are going to look like in 2022? Well, offensively, I don't think they're going to look a lot different. Pete Carmichael has been the quarterback coach in 06. I think he took over as the uh, quote-unquote OC under Sean Payton in 09. Mm -hmm. He's the same guy that's still there. They're going to look the same from a schematic standpoint, have wrinkles here and there that fit whatever game plan 
that week. But you're you're talking about you mentioned Winston his ability to change gears a little bit and be able to distribute the the football horizontally, maybe even short of the first down line, more more high percentage throws. He's still going to stretch the field, and that's the one thing that he can do that Drew Brees could not do later on in his career. Make no mistake, he's going to take shots down the field. Mm-hmm. They've got guys that can go get the rock. He just mentioned the number of the players that can go do it, but I do think he's going to have a little bit more of a shorter passing game at his disposal that will make him much more devastating. When you look at his numbers against the Falcons when he was the Tampa quarterback, his numbers didn't look anything like his overall numbers against the league. He had somewhere around 21 touchdowns, only seven interceptions against the Falcons. He averaged about 275 yards per game. So he's had great success when playing historically the Falcons. Now, this is a different group of players. He's playing with a different football team, so some of that is different. I'll look at the other side of the ball. Shock did a great job of breaking down their offense. Defensively, this is where their their bread's buttered. Mm-hmm. They are salty on the defensive side. They were fourth in the league in scoring a year ago, under 20 points a game. They were sixth in total defense, and they were fourth against the run, only gave up 93 yards a game on the ground. That's where Atlanta's going to have to make some hay is run the football against this team to be able to win this game. Uh, They're going to have to have some flexibility because you don't want Cam Jordan coming off. He's got 21 career games. I think he's got 23 23 sacks or something like that. He's lived and (laughs) feasted on the Falcons. You can't let him come off and get off the ball. Demario Davis, their outstanding inside linebacker, 100 tackles last year, had 16 tackles for loss. They're good on that side of the ball. So Pete Carmichael, same system. Dennis Allen, new head coach, but defensive coordinator a year ago. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of things that are very similar to what New Orleans is supposed to look like. Pete Warner in his, I believe his second or third year, is going to play next to Demario mm-hmm. Davis at the linebacker position. And then another one of their new additions was Tyron Matthew. Again, you talk about a, ven- a veteran in the secondary that knows how to play physical and he knows how to take the football away. So you got to give New Orleans credit, even just, just from a being professional standpoint. They've done a really nice job of bringing in talented players to complete their team. You talked about on offense, Chris Olave being drafted by Ohio State. He is going to be, I think he's going to be a really good player if they find the right touches for him. He's a little bit more leaner of a wide receiver, but this kid is smooth mm-hmm. and he finds a way to make plays. And then you talked a little bit about Michael Thomas. You got to remember, two years ago, he'd been banged up the last two seasons. Two oh, years yeah. ago, he lit the NFL on fire. Now, granted, you still have to figure out whether or not he's going to be healthy and if he gets back to his ways of 2019. But if he does, defense is going to have their hands full because they're going to have a couple of really good receiving options on the offensive side. Again, assuming Jameis Winston well, is able let, to get them the ball. You talk Michael Thomas. Here's his numbers between 2017 and 2019. These are averages averaged 122 receptions per season and 1,500 yard receiving. And during those three seasons, he had 23 receiving touchdowns. That was between 17 and 19. Last time we saw him was in 27 games, just 40 catches. And just a right around 400 yards receiving zero touchdowns. So he declined significantly after the ankle injury. And then there was the, I don't know if I should play. Yeah. And then there was the 21 season. So you're right. Can they get the guy back that they drafted who was an unbelievable player for a three-year stretch? Exactly. And the last thing I'll notice, uh, I'll note is that Taysom Hill, remember, there was the experiment about oh, him playing, playing quarterback. Yeah. They've kind of moved on from that right now. I'm sure he's still going to be involved in some playmaking type packages, but he's moved kind of more to a tight end position now, and they've brought in Andy Dalton as their backup quarterback. So that's kind of a breakdown of personnel for New Orleans. I think if you look at their personnel, they still have the the chance to be a really good team this year. Atlanta's going to have their hands full, right? They're going to have their hands full this weekend, but we wouldn't want it any other way in a rivalry matchup. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, Find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. 
So, guys, let's focus actually on the field. And, Arch, I'm going to come right back to you. We talked a lot about the personnel. We talked about the coaching staff. We talked some about Atlanta. What's it going to take for Atlanta to get to 1-0, and which is the goal after every single week is just get one game at a time? Well, to me, this is, uh, this is going to be Atlanta's theme throughout the season. But certainly in this game, to get off to a good start, you got to win in the margins. And, and I mean, you got to limit penalties. That's mm-hmm. something that we've – seen good games with and then we saw the second game of the preseason and there was 13 penalties and you've got to limit penalties you can't give yards away you're gonna have to win the special teams battle that's again winning in the margins that means we get a guy we pin a guy on a kickoff coverage unit or we get limit no return on punt return or we get a 10 15 20 yard return and that gains you a couple first downs those are hidden yards within a game that either flip the field or give you more of an opportunity for a short field to score or a long field defensively to defend but ultimately it comes down to me the keys of the game are early down success for Atlanta on offense I think you've got to stay in manageable third down situations don't let Jordan tee off and get after you yep. and get after the passer keep the quarterback in play as far as the run game and all that you can run for first downs when it's five and six yards Jock will tell you he and I both moved around but it was in third and 12 <laughs> third and 13 it's kind of hard to take off because all eyes are usually on yeah. you when you take off it's hard to go skate for 13 yards you get them in that man coverage, these guys could create some problems. And on the defensive side of the football, we talked about maybe a little bit more of a dispersed passing game, short. And I think the explosive, if you make them put 10 or 12 plays together, I think you're going to like where you are in the fourth quarter. But yep. if you give up explosive plays, which Jameis is going to want to reach for, especially yep. if this receiver core is intact, like we're talking about, they're going to want to stretch it and go get it. Those are the keys to me. Yeah, and and guys, I'm going to kind of piggyback, and, and I'll give you my quick ones because I'm going to stay consistent, and mine's going to be the, the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. I think Atlanta – and I'm going to focus more on the offensive side because that's kind of the drum that I've been beating. But on the defensive side, too, they brought in some new faces. We talked about Grady Jarrett. You know what you're going to get from him. Defense needs to find a way to limit the explosives as well, as well especially with Alvin Kamara. Like, don't let him get through the tackle box and all of a sudden he rips off a 40-50 yard run so defense is obviously going to be big time got to find a way to get after Jameis Winston but on offense right I want to see communication up front by the offensive line right they've been working the centers throughout the preseason somebody has to step up and make sure that all the calls get communicated down the line not only the communication but the technique there's been too many times that I've been watching and our tackles are stepping underneath themselves giving up corners around the edges you're seeing pass rushers get in the backfield that stuff I feel like needs to get cleaned up it's been a big issue it's something that they have to overcome they brought in some new bodies win the line of scrimmage especially on offense because we can't just expect Marcus Mariota to use his athleticism and get away from sacks get around the corner as you guys know you need to be able to see the entire field as a quarterback sure. not just roll out every time and only have half the field so I want to see them win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball specifically on offense DJ what are you seeing as some of the keys for this you know I think you guys hit on a lot of points that I actually have on, on my list here on both sides of the ball and all of them are good I'll add one to both both sides of the ball. Um, Art, you mentioned being able to run the football. You mentioned the offensive line being able to communicate. I think the run game has to show up in this ball game. They oh, gotta, yeah. It has to pay dividends. It has to give you some positive in this ball game. Hey, I'm not saying you got to rush for 150 yards, but if it's you know second and four, third and three, you got to be able to run the football to pick up a first down, short yards. You got to be able to run the football in this game. And a lot of what this offense is predicated off is being able to use the run game to get your quarterbacks on the perimeter, be able to show some play action, to be able to get those linebackers pulled up a little bit so you can hit some shots behind them. So I think the run game has to pay dividends in this game. And on the defense side of the ball, you talk about Kamara being an X factor, and it is huge. He is one of those type of guys that has all these hidden yards in the ball game. Before you know it, he's got you know 80 yards receiving. He's got 80 yards you know rushing. You got to better stop him. But I think the linebackers in this ball game going to have a big mm. responsibility. You talk yeah, about even outside linebackers or inside linebackers being able to cover in space, but then also be able to tackle in space. That's a big deal because you talk about some of these short and shifty receivers yeah. that they have. They catch these five, six-yard routes. You can't let them turn it into 12, 15, 20-yard mm-hmm. gains, and these guys have to be able to cover. So I think the linebackers are going to play a huge role in this ball game, whether it's in coverage or rushing Jameis on the outside with their hands up like a Lorenzo Carter or Ade to be able to get upfield and put pressure on the QB. Shock, such a good point in the linebackers because who has been Alvin Kamara's kryptonite? <laughs> 
<laughs> Deion Jones. Yeah, sure. And Debo will not play in this game. He is, the, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best cover linebacker in the league, at least he has since he's been in the league. He has shut Kamara down a large number of times when these two teams have gotten together. In fact, he's been the saint breaker, if you will. He had the interception in the end zone in the mm-hmm. color rush game here that ended the game off a of breeze. He had the pick six his rookie year in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. He's had big games against these guys, and he won't play in this game. So someone, in shocks, to Shock's point, one of those linebackers is going to have to step up and be that guy that is, you know, hey, my eyes are on Kamara. Yep. I'm going to yep. take care of him. Yep, and and the, obviously the communication on the defensive side of the well uh, of the ball is going to be huge because of all these different playmakers that they have. So there's some of the keys that we feel like uh, are going to be a necessity for Atlanta to get the win. Let us know what you guys think. Feel free to uh, comment right into us. Let us know. We'll discuss it on the next show. Maybe it'll end up being a key for next week. Yeah. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about – so we talked about what the Atlanta Falcons of 2022 need to do to get a victory. Let's kind of take a step back, and Arch, I'm going to come back to you. (laughs) What kind of um, opening week memories do you have? (laughs) Your first game of the season, whether it was rookie year, whether it was later on in your career, what kind of sticks out to you? Yeah, this is an an easy one. We opened against the Saints in New Orleans my third year in the league. Uh, It was Jim Morris Sr.'s first game as their head football coach. Uh, and we went and we thumped their rear end. We got after them. <laughs> we held the ball for almost 38 minutes of the game. Gerald Riggs had over 150 yards rushing. Uh, the, the memory that sticks out in my mind is we're up 20, 21 to 3 at the time, and we get the ball. I believe it was 21 to 3 at the time. And we get the ball uh, early to mid part of the third quarter, and we go on this march. 18 plays, shove it down their throat. Riggs scores. Plays. Riggs scores from about three yards out, punches it in. We jump up. What at that point? I guess 28 to three at that point on the Saints, and they get the ball, go three and out, uh-huh. and they kick it back to us. Their defense had just been on the field for like eight minutes. Yeah. Oh. We come, we start a march again. I bootlegged one out of the pocket and ran out of bounds about about 15 yards up the field. And Dave Wehmer, their starting corner, comes over and he goes, Arch, just stay in bounds, man. We ain't got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> We're all done. We ended up beating them 31 to 10 and just smacked them around it. Yeah, that was, that was a lot Dave, of Dave, what did you tell us before we started your record against the Saints? We're, I'm, I have not lost the Saints. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's go. <laughs> It's, hey, it's much better than I could say because I think I'm about 500 against the Saints when I was when I was playing. DJ, what about you? What kind of opening week memories can you remember? I just remember my rookie year, um, my rookie year coming into the league, and we were playing Carolina on the road. And okay. We had Carolina in 06, and I think all the talk was about how good Carolina was going to be. It was going to, you know, be a Super Bowl caliber team. You had Jake DeLome, had Keyshawn Johnson, Steve Smith. I mean, they were they were loaded. And we went out and thumped them in that ball game. And it was fun. I mean, my first ever game watching, Mike had a couple touchdowns. Warwick ran for like 130 yards. Jinx had a touchdown. Uh, I remember Brooking and Ed Hartwell. And, I mean, guys like that. I mean, we had just got uh, Abe that year. Abe had two sacks in his mm. first game that year. They are bringing it. Um, big Grady Jackson was in the middle. Just brought him over the from Green kitchen. Bay. Yeah, so, I mean, we, were, we, we felt good about it going in. It was just cool to ever see. Uh, from a, a a guy who grew up watching this team to be a part of it, and then go on a roll similar here, but you're playing at home, but had a a division game, and then go out and beat Carolina was pretty cool. That's yeah, awesome. that is awesome. I, I I tried to remember some of like my rookie year, and I actually had to go back and look it up. I'm not one of these nostalgic <laughs> guys that you know. You talk to some guys, and they're like, "Oh, you remember that play from 2001, oh, like yeah. in the second quarter?" When so- and I was like, "Nope, I don't." <laughs> okay, but in 2000 was my rookie year, and we played against the San Francisco 49ers. That game was here at home. Uh, I think it was the next year we did the West Coast trip, Arch, and I think we had the Raiders and the 49ers back-to-back, mm-hmm. and we were there for 10 days. But I'll just never forget, like, <laughs> playing against the 49ers, like a, a very historic team in the NFL. I was, you know, starting as a long snapper that year, and just the butterflies that I dealt with, you know, it's your first NFL game. You want to yeah. make an impression. And, and, as, and as a long snapper, you know, you're kind of always – like you got to be perfect, right? right? Like you're you're one of those guys that that's towards chance, the end yeah. of the roster, right? <laughs> like you make a mistake or two, and your day your days are going to be <laughs> limited in an NFL uh. uniform. So. I, I lasted eight years, so I think <laughs> yeah, I did a decent job. But we ended up winning that game. It was close. It was 36-28. to 28. I believe it was Jeff Garcia was the quarterback at that time. 2000 sounds about right. Is that right, Dave? So we're Yeah, yeah. So we're describing three wins 
to start the season. Yeah. Atlanta struggled here uh, of recent years in the on opening day game, so it'd be great to get a little nice little yeah, flavor. Yeah, so we, we talked about three. Let's let's go ahead and yeah, get number get, four. Let's get one, let's one get this one. weekend. Yeah. I'm saying. Hey. All right, so that's going to wrap it up here this week on the Falcons Audible presented by AT and I hope we gave you a good rundown of what we felt like Atlanta was going to look like, what New Orleans was going to look like. Took a little trip down memory lane, and, mm-hmm. and I'll try to jog my brain a little <laughs> and see if I can get some really good get memories for you the next time. But, <laughs> hey, we talked about it. Three opening week victories here. Let's go ahead and get a fourth one this weekend at home. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Atlanta Falcons, hosting their bitter rival, the New Orleans Saints. Thanks so much for joining us here on whichever platform you get your podcast, AtlantaFalcons.com, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes. All of those, we thank you for joining us. Continue to like, comment, subscribe. Come check us out every single week as we'll be talking Atlanta Falcons. For Dave Archer, DJ Shockley, I'm Derek Rackley. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Beat the Saints. Let's go.